last night on my post game show for LSU, I blew a gasket, and I'm gonna blow a gasket here. I don't care. This goes for every single team. This isn't LSU related. Just you know, it's not just for LSU. This we you, you could talk about Florida and Kentucky in this too. Mm -hmm. Joe, I don't care and don't really mind as much that Jackson Dart threw for 389 yards and four touchdowns because when you have good quarterbacks and good play callers, guys like that can have performances like that. I don't mind doing that happening. We've seen in the past guys like Tua, Trevor Lawrence, against really good defenses, really good teams, have 350, 400 yards passing. We've seen good, really good quarterbacks do that in the playoffs against really good defenses. You know what bugs the outright shit out of me, though, as an LSU fan? Let me tell you what, what bugs the outright shit out of me. Not only could did you just look putrid defensively, the up front, the front seven, I honestly test your manhood a little. Like, how in the fuck... Do you allow 317 yards on the ground? How in the hell do you allow 317 yards on the ground? Because at some point, you can talk about scheme. LSU fans can run in there and say, fire Matt House, fire Brian Kelly. Sounds good. At some point, at some point, you got a man up. 317 yards on the ground for Ole Miss last night. They were beating the dog shit out of you. By the way, Tulane, Georgia Tech, and Alabama in consecutive weeks didn't allow Quinshot Juckins to go off. Now, he was a little banged up, and I get that. 317 yards on the ground? Oh, we, people want to say, oh, look at Brian Kelly. No, this comes to a point where you got a man up. Joe, Florida, Kentucky? Same thing for Florida. You want to know the same problems that you have? Your front seven acts like they don't give a shit. Mm. They don't give. Name a time you watch more Notre Dame football than anybody I know. Name a time that a Brian Kelly team defensively, besides that national championship game against Alabama, where he allowed, where that a Notre Dame team allowed a team to run for 317 yards. I mean, I don't know of any off the top of my head. You know the why? The national championship game comes to mind immediately, though. You, you know why? You can't tell you why? Because not only did he have dudes ready to play, and the, they did the simple things right at Notre Dame, they actually gave a shit. It's funny hearing you give credit to Notre Dame. For no, I mean, it's just the truth. I, I, I know. Take the bias out of it. LSU fans can get mad at me all they want to. Let's take the bias out of it. Joe, giving up that many yards on the ground, giving up that many yards on the ground proves to me that you you didn't care at times. Blake, I think you hit the nail on the head there. That was my immediate thought and what I wrote down, take away from this game. Your defense played incredibly soft. Incredibly soft. And it's not like one of those games where you watch it and it's like, man, we just don't have a counter move for what they're calling. We don't have that counter move for what they're doing. There were way too many damn runs by Quinshawn Judkins and Trey Harris, I believe, is the, the old Miss receiver who had uh, from Louisiana, I might add, uh, an amazing game barreling through soft would be tackles. All of that stuff is an identity thing, it is a mentality thing. That comes down to coaching, that comes down to preparation the week leading into a game. When Joe, you that looked on well before that, though, that happens during the summer. It yes, but what I'm getting at here is I don't know how you cannot, as a as a collective group, as a front seven, and as a defensive line unit, uh, all the the whole defense, not watch the film leading up to this game and not be licking your chops and thinking, oh, we're about to get eight sacks. We're about to hold the, this team to under 100 yards rushing. That offensive line for Ole Miss has been terrible. Terrible to start this season. And they got bullied by a unit that is one of the worst in the SEC. I just don't know how it can be that far on the opposite end of the spectrum of our expectation. I do give Ole Miss a lot of credit, though. I mean, they showed up. They showed up in a game 
that was do or die where they needed to go a million miles per hour. And they knew that if this was going to be a shootout, the only way that they were going to win is if it was a shootout and they were the ones with the last bullet in the chamber. Well, and, and you that's know what, what happened. Else? Brian Kelly at the end of the game said, I don't like playing games like this. Well, then why did you allow it? I don't like playing games like this. It's 2023 well, or college football coach. What? Well, no, what he means is I know what he's trying to say. Okay. He doesn't like having games where defenses can't make stops. He wants to be able to okay. – and I think coaches to his – to his like Saban, Kirby, Kelly, the only one that really does it effectively like this is Lincoln. But it doesn't pay off for him in the, in the long run, in the playoffs. Uh -huh. But, Joe, you know what else I'm going to say? They did not have an answer schematically for Ole Miss. They, they didn't change anything. The one time, the, the two times when I watched him today that they changed up something, they went, Ole Miss went for it on fourth down. A true freshman comes off the edge. He bats the ball down. Okay, you get a turnover on downs. LSU th then throws a fade route, which, by the way, you know what sucks? You know what really sucks? And I know that you had the hot take about Jane Daniels and the Heisman thing earlier in the year. Joe, he's averaging 400 yards and four touchdowns a game. The, the, the simple nature that Jane Daniels arguably, arguably, mm -hmm. because of the teams that he's played, he he's – like I think Michael Penix Jr. has 2,008 total yards on the year. George, Jane Daniels has 200, 2,002. Like he is right there as, as of having – Joe, you have a quarterback that is having a Heisman year. He is having a Heisman year, and defensively – you are not even changing anything schematically. You're not. Like, they they went into there and said, this is what we're going to run. At some point, Joe, you know what you got to do? You can't get home with the front four. Send some blitzes. Go zero man-to-man -man coverage. Go zero blitz. You know why? Because it doesn't matter if they score. They're going to score anyway. They're going to score anyway. You got to change something. You got to do something different. If you don't do anything different, Joey Freshwater is going to kick your ass. You bring up a really good point about Jane Daniels. And by the way, that's a very, that's a great observation. At one point, at what point do you realize nothing we're doing is working? And if we're going to be overly aggressive and we're still giving up points, not Joe, being overly aggressive? aggressive. They blitzed three times that I counted all game. Right, if you're not being aggressive and they're continuing to score, what is the difference if you just, Send eight at that point. I would send everybody at that point. It's Madden. Th that's what, and we're going to talk about the Duke Notre Dame game. That's what Duke did. Duke was like, you know what? They're kind of moving the ball. Oh, former Brian Kelly, DC. Who would have thought? Exactly. And what they started to do, they said, you know what? Screw it. it there's going to be a couple guys open. We're just going to send everybody because that offensive line is doing great. It's the only way that we're going to create pressure. So you bring up a really good point. I think the thing that, as you've said, is very frustrating for LSU is that you're right. Jane Daniels has been phenomenal this year. I'm not going to go as far as to say the Heisman thing. And, and, and so he leads I don't wait, 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 wait. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about the Heisman stuff category. right now. I don't want to talk about the Heisman stuff right now. My point is, is that he is playing better than my expectation. He is, there was that one throw that he had later on in the game where he delivered a very tight window throw, a really, really tight, narrow window throw to score a touchdown and forget who he connected with. That's a really tough throw to make. And he's an aggressive player. He's not afraid to take those chances. I mean, I'd like him fumble. I, I would like for, out? I would like, for, yes, I was going to say, I'd like for him to maybe stop being a little stupid with some of his aggressiveness, like <laughs> not trying to run out of bounds or, um, what well, doesn't matter were, every time he ran out of bounds, they hit him anyway. There were a number of throws that he also had where he was really forcing the thing in, into double coverage and just trying to hope somebody can make a play on the ball. Oh, well, they did. They did. And at the end of the game, it did cost them in some of those situations. But Jane Daniels has been great. And you would have thought that maybe if LSU has two losses up to this point, it would have been because Jane Daniels was struggling and was having problems. But that's not the case. Your defense is not only weak, it's, it's terrible. It's not good. Something has to be changed if if there want if there needs to be a turnaround, and Luther Burton's going to run all over you guys if you don't oh, show up and prepare. Here here's something that I said last night. Okay, Joe, you're not going to agree with this. Nobody's going to yeah. agree with me, and it's okay. 
I know that Brian Kelly's an offensive dude. I know that he's called plays at Notre Dame. I know he called plays at Cincinnati in reference to offensively. Dog, you for the first 15 years of your career, you called defenses. Maybe he needs to. I, I mean, listen, you don't pay it. Say what you want about the man. Say what you want. Notre Dame fans are going to eat me alive uh, in, in saying this. It's fine. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> Your girlfriend's cheating on you. Bottom line, okay, I, I, I might go. I don't go. I, listen, I do not go to press conferences on Mondays. I've never done it. I didn't do it under Orgeron. I didn't, hadn't done it on the Kelly. I'm thinking about going tomorrow and being like, hey, you thinking about calling plays? Defensively, I mean, because should. what else is going to change? Be now, Matt House did some decent things last year, but you know what he was also surrounded by? He was surrounded by five seniors in the DB room that knew what they were doing. He was surrounded by dudes up front that gave a shit, and now they don't. You got a freshman linebacker. By the way, just going to throw this out there. Here's a crazy stat for you. You ready? Everybody keeps telling me from a uh, – Harold Perkins' perspective. What are you doing with Harold Perkins? Joe, they ran the ball that he, they ran the ball to his general direction or his side of the football 87% of the time last night. 87% of the time. Do you want to know the yards per carry? 8.9 yards per carry. Oh my God. Like, so you can tell me all that you want in reference. Now we've seen good pass rushes this happen to. We've seen Von Miller that happened to LSU did it against Miles Garrett. They ran for 300 yards right at Miles Garrett all night long. We've seen that before. You got to give him help. He could not, Joe, they put the big tight end number 86 on Harold Perkins and said, go man to man and beat him. Joe, he beat him all night. He, he beat him all night. They didn't give him help. They didn't send pressure. They didn't send blitzes. They didn't change things schematically. And they were like, well, we're having problems lining up. But you know what? Then that's a personnel issue. I can live with you calling something and dudes missing it. They're already missing it. At what point do you go man-to-man -man coverage? They played two guys that never started before. A true freshman three-star who had two pass breakups. And with Terrence Welsh, I, I, I don't know. You got a lot of dudes that look like Tarzan, play like shit. I like that iteration of that saying. So, okay, this isn't just an LSU show, so I want to talk a little bit I about know. Old, old Miss, the old Miss perspective of this. Look, I, I'm, I'm feeling – I understand your pain. Having already suffered through a, a loss of a game that you should have won, like I know that feeling. I know it all too well. Old but, Miss looked great offensively, old, dude. Old Miss looked great offensively. I, I got to just be blunt here and say this. That defense is not good enough for them to finish the stretch and finish with a really good record this year. They can win nine games and somewhere down the line. I don't know off top of my head, off my head who the rest of the remaining schedule is, but they're going to they got Georgia. They got Arkansas at home this week, and I think they got Georgia. Georgia might score like thirty-five plus points on them, which is a lot for them considering how much offensive trouble that they've been having with all the injuries that they've had. Ole Miss's defense is not good enough to to match up with a lot of these teams in the SEC. The other aspect of this, again, Lane called a really good game. They were aggressive. They did everything that they needed to. But why aren't we getting more offensive play calling consistency and success, cons consistent success from Old Miss? Lane called because this year. you want to know why? Because Lane called plays. It's a light, it's a lot like what happened last night. And we could we can talk about this in a minute, but Joe, Hugh Freeze called plays for Auburn yesterday against Georgia. You want to know why that game was closer? Because Hugh called plays. You want to know why they, why LSU was getting their shit punched in? It's because Lane was calling plays. Everybody's like, no, he's not. The whole Ole Miss beat. No, it wasn't. But I can visibly stay on my television screen when he's got a play sheet and he's talking in the mic and the play's getting sent in. I really do think that that's the case. I really do think that he was calling the plays. because thousand percent what happened, Joe. I can I watched the whole damn game. I watched it twice now. I mean, <laughs> for, for that much of a different, it's not like it was a slight progression to go from the terrible output that they had against Alabama, who's a good defense. They're a really good defense, but let's be real with ourselves here. That is not an elite, unstoppable defense that you can't move the ball against. For them to go from that to 40 plus points and 700 yards, all of that stuff, they clearly are going back to lane. 
I guess that they just need to stick with Lane for the rest of the year if they want to stay yeah. at, at hopes of, of staying in these games. I don't know why they want to admit it. If Lane's going to call offenses, they can go into Athens and win. They can go into Athens and win. You know I don't why? Know they, I, go that, I don't know if I go that far because I don't. That, that, that offensive line will get eaten up by Georgia. True, but you know what happened yesterday? Jackson Dart literally was throwing the ball in 1.2 seconds. He he threw the ball in 1.2 seconds yesterday against LSU in the first half. He was getting it and throwing it and getting guys out in space. And you know what you can't teach? Let me tell you what you can't teach: speed. And they got it all over the place. Now, I agree. It's going to be tougher than them to run the football, but they can they? Well, yes. Will they? Yeah. No. Them running the football was a big reason why they had no so doubt. much of an easier time in this LSU game because you look at all the previous games so far this year, couldn't run the ball. Quinshawn Judkins had one of his worst spans of his career, his early career so far. That lack of, of output running the ball has led to Jackson Dart forcing a lot of things and having to create with his legs – and now he's in a situation where there's much less pressure on him because you're able to run the football. I don't think that they can run the ball against Georgia. I just I just don't see that likely happening. 